Today, a priority review designation in non-small cell lung cancer, a fast track designation in acute myeloid leukemia, a breakthrough therapy designation in lung cancer, FDA approval saw in prostate cancer and ovarian cancer, and a complete response letter issued for a biosimilar. Welcome to Enclave News Network, I'm Gina Columbus. The FDA has granted a priority review to a supplemental new drug application for fatinib for the frontline treatment of patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer whose tumors harbor EGFR exon 21 L861Q, G719X, or S768I substitution mutations. These uncommon mutations represent less than 10% of the EGFR mutations found in patients with NSCLC, but are associated with poor prognosis and survival. Bo Ringer Ingelheim, the developer of Afatinib, submitted data from the Lux Lung 2, 3, and 6 trials to support the SNDA. A post hoc analysis examined 75 patients across the three trials who received Afatinib and were positive for uncommon EGFR mutations. Investigators stratified patients with point mutations or duplications in exons 18 to 21 into group 1, patients with de novo THR790 met mutations in exon 20 alone or in combination with other mutations into group 2, and those with exon 20 insertions as group 3. The median progression-free survival was 10.7 months in group 1, 2.9 months in group 2, and 2.7 months in group 3. Additionally, the median overall survival was 19.4 months in group 1, compared with 14.9 months in group 2, and 9.2 months in group 3. In acute myeloid leukemia, the FDA has granted fast-track designation to the investigational compound gilteritinib for adult patients with FLT3 mutation positive relapse refractory disease. The designation is based on results from a phase 1-2 dose escalation and dose expansion study in which the research team observed anti-disease activity at all dose levels with gilteritinib. Of the 249 patients included in the full analysis, 40% had a response to treatment, including 19 who had a complete response, 10 who had a complete remission with incomplete platelet recovery, 46 who had complete remission with incomplete hematological recovery, and 25 who had partial remission. The Fast Track program is designed to accelerate the development, review, and approval of drugs that treat serious and life-threatening conditions. The FDA has awarded a breakthrough therapy designation to osimertinib for the first-line treatment of patients with metastatic EGFR-positive non-small cell lung cancer. Frontline osimertinib was associated with a 54% reduction in the risk of progression or death compared with standard erlotinib or gefitinib, according to Phase 3 data from the FLORA study that was reported at the 2017 ESMO Congress. AstraZeneca, the manufacturer of osimertinib, submitted data from the double-blind FLORA trial to support its biologics license application, which investigated the third-generation irreversible EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor in treatment-naive patients with locally advanced or metastatic EGFR mutation-positive NSCLC. Results show that the median progression-free survival was 18.9 months for osimertinib versus 10.2 months for the control group. Improvements were seen in all pre-specified subgroups, including patients with and without brain metastases. In prostate cancer, a new drug application was submitted to the FDA for apalutamide for the treatment of patients with non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. The application for apalutamide, a next-generation oral androgen receptor inhibitor, included data from the pivotal Phase 3 Spartan trial. The study evaluated the safety and efficacy of apalutamide versus placebo in patients with a rapidly rising prostate-specific antigen level despite receiving continuous androgen deprivation therapy. Janssen Biotech plans to release results from the Spartan trial at a future medical meeting. Currently, there are no FDA-approved treatments for patients with non-metastatic CRPC, according to Janssen. A supplemental new drug application has been submitted to the FDA for rucaparib as a maintenance therapy for patients with recurrent epithelial ovarian, fallopian tube, or primary peritoneal cancer who are in a complete or partial response to platinum-based chemotherapy. The SNDA is based on findings from the Phase 3 Aerial 3 trial 
in which the PARP inhibitor improved median progression-free survival by 11.2 months versus placebo for patients with BRCA mutant platinum-sensitive ovarian cancer. Additionally, for patients with germline or somatic BRCA mutations, there was a 77% reduction in the risk of progression or death with rucaparib versus placebo. The median PFS with rucaparib for this subset was 16.6 months compared with 5.4 months for placebo. Similar PFS benefits were observed in patients with BRCA wild-type tumors and those with homologous recombination deficiency or low to high loss of heterozygosity. Rucaparib is currently approved by the FDA as a monotherapy for patients with ovarian cancer with a deleterious BRCA mutation following prior treatment with two or more chemotherapies. Biocon announced that the FDA has issued a complete response letter for Mylan's Biologics license application for MYL1401H, a proposed biosimilar for Amgen's pengphilgrastum. The company issued a statement reporting that the CRL relates to a pending update of the BLA to include information regarding facility requalification activities taken since the addition of recent plant modifications. Biocon is developing MYL1401H in partnership with Mylan, and the companies filed the application in February 2017. Originally, the FDA set a deadline to issue a decision on MYL1401H by October 9th under the Biosimilar User Fee Act. MYL1401H is one of six biosimilars the companies are developing together. Pegfilgrastum is FDA approved to decrease the incidence of infection as manifested by febrile neutropenia in patients with non-myeloid malignancies receiving myelosuppressive anti-cancer drugs associated with a clinically significant incidence of febrile neutropenia. This week, we sat down with Dr. Sarah Martin of Vanderbilt University to discuss the importance of palliative care and how it has demonstrated improvements in overall survival for patients with cancer. So that was I would say one of the landmark articles for palliative care in 2010 by Jennifer Temmel, who's at Harvard. And that study specifically looked at patients with advanced lung cancer. And it compared patients with advanced lung cancer that got usual care versus those that got usual care with palliative care from diagnosis. And the findings were remarkable. Um, they found patients that got Usual care plus the addition of palliative care had better quality of life, better symptom management, and overall lived about two months longer. Um, why that is, we don't have a great answer for why that happened. One could argue maybe they just felt better. And so you felt better and maybe you were able to stay on treatment longer, and maybe that led to a longer prognosis. But that's the article that I think really sort of catapulted palliative care more into the limelight of something that could really help patients and families. That's all for today. Thank you for watching on Clive News Network. I'm Gina Columbus.